Hi, welcome to the channel to Irrational. I'm Pranay Sharma and in this video we are going to see how do we create and use matrix in R programming. This is part of the series where we are learning basics of R programming using R Studio. If you have not checked out the previous videos, please do so. Let's get started. In R programming, matrix can be used in two forms. You can do arithmetic operations directly on the matrix. You might have learned that in your previous studies. Or you can use matrix just as a form of storing data in two dimensions because we will have rows as well as we'll have columns. So you can store the data in two dimensions and use that matrix for any kind of analysis where they may require columns and rows separately. Let's just see how do we create a matrix. Here I want to create a matrix of three by three dimensions. So I will choose a vector. I'll first create a vector of nine values. I'm randomly choosing these values so that there is no logic behind how those values were taken. I just have nine values, each separated by comma. I will take two of these vectors. And I will create two matrix with it. First, I'll create matrix A. The function is matrix. The first argument we are going to give the vector, let's say x. Then the second argument is how many number of rows do we want? N row. In this case, we want three rows. You can either specify the number of rows using n rows, n row, or you can specify number of columns using ncol. You can see up here it is also showing ncol. You don't need to specify both of them. You have to specify only one of these two. Next is by row. This argument is to tell whether we want the matrix to arrange the data by row or by columns. So you can write true true all capital or you can write false, F-A-L-S-E, all capital, or you can just write capital T and capital F. Whenever you are writing true or false, you can just write capital T and capital F. That will work too. So here, if I show you the matrix, my data has been arranged by row. Okay. So here you can see 1, 3, 5. This was my first data. Then 279, second row, and then 362. So this data was arranged by row. It completed one row and then went to the next one. Now, if I make it by row false, then it will arrange the data. You can see 135, then 279, 362. It, the data is arranged by columns. I'll create another matrix with Y. Here I can specify NCOL, number of columns. That is also three. And I'll say by row. This argument is just by row. And I'll say by row is true. So I have now two matrix, matrix A and matrix B. You can see here matrix V, this was arranged by row 1, 5, 3, 6, 2, 8 and 3, 9, 5. You can do basic arithmetic on matrix. You can say matrix A plus minus multiplication division. What it will do is it will add 2 to each of these values. Same way if I divide, it will divide 2 with each of these values. Right, so simple numerical uh, uh, arithmetic plus minus multiplication division power will work exactly the same way. It will add, subtract, multiply, divide, raise to each one of those values and give you a answer in matrix. You can add two matrix together. 
Here you can see it adds individually each value of the matrix and gives you a third matrix. Same thing, you can subtract two matrix together. Same thing, it will subtract each value of matrix B to matrix A and give you another matrix of three by three. But if you multiply, you get the same thing, multiply each value and give you answer as matrix, same thing with division. Divide each value and give answer as a matrix. You can find the determinants. Determinant of a matrix. You have DT. This would be the determinant minus 16. Similarly, you can find transpose. For transpose, you have T. This will be the transpose of matrix A. You can find inverse. For inverse, you have a function called solve. It can do a lot of different things, but for matrix, it will give you the inverse of the matrix. And you can also have matrix multiplication. So when I multiply two matrix, matrix A into matrix B, it multiplied individual values, but the matrix multiplication does not work that way. So for matrix multiplication, what you have to do is, you have to write matrix A, percentage, multiplication percentage, matrix B. And this is how you do matrix multiplication. We very rarely use any of these because we usually use matrix as just a way of storing data. So matrix can store numerical value, matrix can store non-numerical values as well. So the things that we are going to do, first is you can find the dimensions. Dimensions of a matrix by DIM. Here you can see three, three, three rows and three columns. First number is for number of rows. The second is for number of columns. Or you can use N row to know the number of rows and N column. NCOL for knowing the number of columns. In this case, three and three. You can index similar to uh, what we did uh, what we did in vectors. Okay, we can find a single value out of this matrix. I can say matrix A, but I'll have to specify the row as well as the column in this case. So first value is for row. If I say two comma one, it is going to take the second row and the first column value. And I press Control Enter. Here you get three. That is second row and first column. If I want a whole column, can say matrix and I specify only the column. Or in this case, let's let's say I I want the whole row. I want the whole second row. So row and then I will leave the column blank. Okay. So comma blank. This will give me the whole row. Second. This gives me only the second row. Similarly for column, do the same thing. Matrix A and comma 3. This is nothing but the third column. Third column. You can see in both the cases it is giving me answer as a vector. So if I am taking only single row or if I am taking a single column, it will treat it as a vector. You can remove rows or column. So if I say matrix A, I say minus two comma blank. That means I'm re removing the whole second row. And here I have only first row and the third row. This is again treated as a matrix now. Similarly, I can remove whole column a comma three a comma minus three that ways i have removed the whole third column here 
you can remove a row or a column from a matrix you can also combine two matrix so now we have two matrix matrix a and matrix b i can use r bind this way it will bind the rows of the matrix so i'll say matrix a comma matrix b here i get a matrix you can see first three rows are of matrix a then the next three rows are of matrix b in this case you will have to make sure that your matrix a and matrix b has the same number of columns in this case you have to make sure they have the same number of columns similarly you can use c bind c bind is used for column bind in this case you have to make sure that they have the same number of rows so matrix a comma matrix b if i press control enter you can see these three are matrix a these three are matrix b you can also use these methods to create matrix from vectors as well so if i have vector let's say a vector b so let's say 3 is to 5 and c vector So I have three three values A B C. I can use let's say R bind to create a matrix. Let's say A comma B comma C, and here I get a matrix of these three rows because I have binded each one of those rows. I can use C bind as well. It will bind them as columns. here you go these a b and c these are three different columns now so these are all the information that we require of matrix for our statistical analysis later on in the next video we are going to learn boolean as well as if else statement i'll see you in the next one